All right, hello and good afternoon, everyone. This is Tommy Valentine with Historic Athens. We want to thank you for taking some time today to be with us for today's episode. This is episode 41 of 55 in our series, This Moment in History, COVID-19 in Athens, Georgia. We want to thank Peggy and Denny Gallus for being this week's sponsor. Each week, we produce five episodes each weekday at one o'clock. Uh, but to produce this series, we've relied on our sponsors. A little later in the program, you're going to hear about our annual sponsors, but we really want to thank uh, Peggy and Denny for supporting our work in documenting and exploring this unique, distinct moment in Athens history. Uh, if you visit our video archives, you'll see some of our past conversations. These are conversations with elected officials, community leaders, entrepreneurs, all kinds of folks across Athens. Uh, today's no different. We're interviewing uh, Representative Houston Gaines, uh, who represents part of the Athens area. Uh, we really appreciate Representative Gaines for coming to the program with us. Now, a quick note about today's uh, broadcast. Um, there are a lot of issues. Uh, anytime that we're going to have elected officials on this week or next, uh, this series does continue through June 26th. There's always going to be topical issues. Uh, you're free to ask any questions you want. Uh, and anything that seems pertinent, we'll be able to bring on screen. But I want to emphasize that today's broadcast is really specifically focused on COVID-19. Uh, our hope is that this package uh, will be submitted uh, at the conclusion of this series to our local libraries and research institutions. And 100 years from now, it's really important to us that researchers be able to look back and say, what, what was the effect of COVID-19 on the way people lived and did their work? And so that's where you're gonna hear our questions primarily draw on today. So uh, with that said, without any further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and bring on our guest. So uh, he is a state representative, he was raised locally. Uh, we'll get to know him a bit better. Uh, and then if you have questions or comments, uh, you can submit them below and we'll bring them on screen. So thank you very much. Uh, let's go ahead and get Representative Gaines onto today's episode. So one moment. All right, great. Um, Houston, thank you so much for joining us today. How are you? Let's see here. I, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do a take two on that because I have to. I had to fix your audio. Yeah. Let's try that again. So Houston, thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing today? I'm good. How about you, Tommy? I'm good, I'm good. I'm in indoors and it's looking a little rainy outside, but uh, aside from that uh, and the general insanity of being inside so much, I'm doing okay. Um, uh, what about you? How are things going on your end? It's good, you know. It's um, it's crazy, uh, but but that's um, you know, the the times that we're in with with obviously COVID and uh, just an unprecedented time in in our world. And um, obviously, uh, first off, I want to thank Peggy and Denny Gallus for for uh, putting this uh, week together and their donation. They're good folks, and I've enjoyed getting to know them. They just have a a wonderful house uh, here in Athens and just historic. I love. I, I got to go over there actually last year. Uh, during the Notre Dame weekend, mm -hmm. the football game, when Notre Dame came to town, uh, they hosted some folks from Notre Dame and from UGA, and so that was a really fun experience. They're great, great people, and want to say I appreciate them and appreciate you, Tommy, putting this together and uh, looking forward to our conversation. Of course. And you were over there cheering on Notre Dame, right? You're a big Notre Dame fan. That's the... Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, um, no, not quite. <laughs> I, I uh, was very pleased with the outcome, let's say that. Yeah. Okay, good, good, good. Um, so, Houston, uh, anytime you're an elected official, you become someone that people are aware of, maybe a name they've heard, but folks may not know you personally. Uh, you know, the first time we met, I think you were either about to or recently had graduated from high school. I know that you um, have local roots. Uh, and, you know, even your relation with Peggy and Denny dates back to their admiration from some of your family members and their relationship to local history. Uh, can you talk a little bit about who you are and what your relationship is to Athens? Sure. Yeah. So, Tommy, like you said, born and raised here in Athens. And um, uh, I just I, I love Athens. I mean, it's a place that uh, has been so good to me and had the chance to, to like I say, I mean, since day one, uh, I've been here my my family uh, still most all lives here. Uh, my my grandmother is still alive. My my grandfather uh, was a superior court judge in Athens, and and so I got to know uh, politics a little bit through him. Um, you know, he he passed away when I was 
younger, but certainly, like you said, Peggy and Denny, <clears throat> and I worked for Nancy Denson, uh, probably that relationship may have never happened had it not been for my grandfather. Um, and so uh, certainly he helped pave the mm -hmm. way for me in, in so many ways. And, and uh, my parents, they still live here in Athens. Um, and then my sister and brother, they, they, they live here in Athens. Well, my brother uh, is, is actually back in school, uh, in, in med school. So, uh, but, but it's been great having, uh, ha having the whole family here. And, um, so, uh, went to, went to college here, went to UGA and, and, uh, just a great experience at the university of Georgia. And, um, you know, it's just hard to beat UGA. You're talking about, uh, football a little bit earlier. I, I, uh, uh just had a great experience, uh, at UGA and of course, uh, cheering on Georgia, uh, football. I, uh, when I was younger, I got to be, uh, good friends with Dan McGill, who was kind of an Athens icon, and uh, he was somebody who mentored me in a lot of ways and taught me to love the University of Georgia. And um, I'll never forget, kind of had to make a decision, you know, where to go to school. And and uh, one of the things I was, you know, there were some people I, I was, it was a, it was a tough uh, decision, uh, and uh, but didn't want to disappoint him. And and uh, best decision I ever made. And uh, so. Went to UGA. I work here in Athens. Work at Cannon Financial Institute, and uh, they've been great to us. And and then uh, got elected to the state house um, only a year and a half ago, but it feels like uh, ten years ago. With with uh, it's, it's quite a time to be in politics, and uh, mm -hmm. you know. But really, I don't. Cons I mean, I, I'm really more into it for the public service side. I know that there's a lot of things that we get into, and it's. Uh, uh, and I'm sure we'll have a chance to talk about this, but you know, politics is is not a uh, nice activity, unfortunately, mm -hmm. uh, these days. And um, I'm a big fan of uh, being friendly with people. I mean, when uh, you know, I, I I've uh, I mean, I I said I work for you know for for the mayor uh, for Nancy Denson, uh, and and uh, just tried to be someone who folks can uh, call on, no matter what your background or what your beliefs are. We may not agree on everything, but we can work together and find solutions. And so, uh, it's a neat, neat opportunity to represent Athens. It's it's an interesting situation because, I mean, you know, I think probably most everybody watching knows I'm a Republican or or whatever. Uh, you know, the evil Republican uh, <laughs> that uh, that some people in Athens want to portray. And and uh, but what we try to do is just work together. And and but I have three other counties: Oconee, Jackson, and Barrow counties. Mm -hmm. And then you have Clark County, and so it's a really interesting uh, dichotomy, and and uh, I enjoy the experience every day, and get to get to work with so many unique uh, people because because of the district. You know, I think you have some districts where it's, you know, you only have one set of beliefs, or it's uh, pretty, uh, you know, partisan in one way or the other. But I really welcome the opportunity to 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 represent a community that is so diverse and that has uh, people with. Uh, different perspectives, and so it's uh, it's been a great great year and a half, and looking forward to continuing uh, continuing our work ahead. So there, there's two things I want to pick up on based on what you just said. One is you talked about your time at UGA. As far as I know, your first elected office was while at UGA, and 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 so can you talk a little bit about um, how you found yourself starting to do public service, um, elected service while a student at UGA? Well, I do think, you know, as a student, um, you have a lot of opportunities to to get involved and make a difference. And uh, for me, um, you know, I had the chance to run uh, the mayor's campaign and and that kind of got me, uh, you know, and, and maybe some of those conversations and, and uh, being a part of trying to make a difference because I really saw her as somebody that, that I admire and look up to. And I think, um, you know, she always had the best interest of her community at heart, and she taught me so much. And so, I uh, learned from her, and and felt like uh, we had the opportunity to to be involved at UGA, and so ended up uh, being student body vice president, and student body president, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, it was a really really good experience. We had the opportunity to really do some good things, and uh, what I learned a lot there is it, it's it's. Um, this whole area is, is based on relationships. You've got to be able to work with people. And, uh, you know, that obviously it's different than what I do now. Uh, but, you know, even there you had to work with, you know, your constituent student, the student mm -hmm. population, but you also had administrators and faculty and staff. And uh, so you have to work those relationships and try to find the best outcome and try to find 
uh, solutions that that help everybody. And so I think we were able to do a lot of really good things while while we were there. And uh, so I'm really proud of that. And and uh, it's not something I get a chance to talk about a lot. So I appreciate right. you bringing it up. And and well, uh, you know, my, my you know uh, for for viewers that are tuned in, and I see we're seeing an increasing number of folks logging in. So thank you for joining us. You know, the first time I I worked with you, it was on an initiative. Uh, I had just gotten to my MPA program and worked with the mayor's office on this initiative called the Mayor's Call to Service. Um, I know that's the first time you and I crossed paths. And, uh, you know, in, in talking to you over the years, I know that one point of pride with uh, your time as SGA, I believe it was when you were SGA president, was you actually helped conduct a survey that examined students' attitudes on downtown Athens and other things. And some of that led different policy conversations, uh, including some ones on civil rights and other things o over the, the following years. You, you know, I know you mentioned that you felt like you did some good things during your time with SGA. Is there anything in particular that comes to mind that you want to highlight? Well, uh, gosh, it feels so long ago, but uh, we, you know, we did have the chance to work on uh, really important issues. I mean, whether it was kind of working with local government, state government on issues that uh, students necessarily hadn't had their voice uh, heard on. We uh, helped, you know, get students uh, uh, with with transportation issues mm -hmm. on campus, meal plan. I mean, it, you know, whether it's uh, it would, it, you know, it's kind of interesting because you had some issues that you could directly control and impact on campus. And then you had other issues uh, off campus that uh, in the local government, uh, frankly, there's some I st still see being debated today mm -hmm. uh, at the state level, you know, having the, that voice heard, trying to make sure students, you know, that were, uh, you know, for example, just the Hope Scholarship, making sure that our uh, legislators know how important that is uh, and has made a made such a big difference for so many students. And so, uh, you know, there were some tangible issues on campus that we uh, made a direct impact on, but at the same time, we were also able to, to, I think, and uh, maybe for the first time, or maybe for uh, the most in, in an impactful way, we were able to talk talk to policymakers. You know, we started a a breakfast uh, with the mayor and commission that I think is still going on now. At least it was until recently, and there we would talk about two or three issues. You know, I never wanted to become a list of fifty demands. You know, instead, let's talk about two or three issues where we actually mm -hmm. can make an impact. And so uh, we did that, and I think that helps. Uh, better those relations because uh, students are such a vital part of our community and uh, let's face it Athens would not be what it is without the University of Georgia and so I think it's important that we build relationships not tear them down um, and so I think that just beginning those those processes uh, are continuing to have an impact today and I'm proud of that yeah uh, if uh you just tuned in. We're interviewing Representative State Representative Houston Gaines as part of episode 41 of this moment in history, COVID-19 in Athens, Georgia. If you have questions or comments, uh, please feel free to submit them as a comment below this video. As long as we're still live, we can include it in today's broadcast. Uh, so, um, Houston, um, I want to uh, I want to do two things before we go on to talk about COVID. One is I, I want to make sure our viewers have a better sense of what being the state rep means, what the job is, what the routines of the job is, the cycles of the job. I think that there's a lot that the public doesn't often know about what a state rep is. Um, but before I get to that, I, I want to talk about something else, which is before we were on air, we were having a conversation. And I know that um, we wanted to take a moment today to kind of, you know, spotlight the passing of um, Representative Jerry Neesmith um, and, and talk about, uh, you know, uh, it's very sad. We were actually scheduled to have a conversation with him on Friday. Uh, we were, I was supposed to call him this morning to help reschedule that. And it's, it's a real shame. Um, one of the things that you and I t used that tragic passing to talk about, though, was that uh, we often have friends in our lives, especially if we're involved in politics, that we don't agree with um, or don't agree with on everything. And um, you, you made the the kind of uh, joking remark earlier, evil Republicans, but you know, in, in Athens, Athens does have a very specific political bent, largely. It's one of the counties that you find yourself in. And so I'm just curious, you know, uh, how has that shaped your attitude on, on bipartisan friendships, on, on, on working with people that you don't always agree with, on maintaining relationships with people you don't agree with? Um, 
having grown up in a community that's one of the counties that may be least completely in line with where your politics are. I mean, how does all of that work for you personally? Yeah, well, like you said, first off, I want to just uh, say how much we're going to miss here in East Smith. He, uh, he, he was uh, someone who I really always found to be a voice of reason in our community and just somebody who was just a good person. And that's um, when I think of political people, I know a lot of people think partisan, partisan, right, left. I think, is this a good person? Mm. Because, you know, the reality is and everything, you got folks who aren't. And um, but Jerry Neesmith was just a decent person. And I always enjoyed the chance to talk with him. I got to know him really over the last several years. In fact, we caught up last week and uh, I'll just always appreciate that phone call. It was the last time I talked to him and uh, we got a chance to catch up for about 30 minutes. And, um, and you know, he, he, uh, we, when I was in school, um, uh, you know, we got to know each other uh, through some of those breakfasts I was talking about a minute ago. And uh, so that was uh, uh, kind of really where we first interacted along with the mayor's campaign. And uh, he would just always listen to you. And, and uh, you know, was, uh, even when we were talking last week, it would, you talk about keeping relationships. Mm. I mean, I, you know, first campaign when I ran, he, he supported me at the beginning. And, and then, you know, the race changed and, and he didn't end up uh, supporting us. And, mm. and that didn't matter to me. He was just a good person and he was a friend. And uh, so I think that is uh, what politics should be more about is being willing to, to build those relationships and build friendships. Um, and again, that phone call last week, something that'll always mean a lot to me because I just think Jerry did a lot of really good things for our community, you know, particularly for the West side. And, and, uh, he is certainly going to be missed on the commission, uh, but also just as a person in our community. And so appreciate Jerry's years of leadership and friendship and, uh, and, uh, you know, just stunning really. I mean, when I, when I woke up on, on Sunday morning and I saw that, I just, I couldn't believe it, uh, because you know, we'd just been talking the other day and, and, uh, I know he was supposed to be on your show on Friday and, right. um, so just a really sad and, and, uh, tragic moment for Athens because he's just a, a, uh, like I said, truly good person. The, uh, the, the idea of, um, you know, it's interesting, uh, as I told you this interview in some ways we're broadcasting out to our loyal listeners that watch this every week. Um, but then we're also trying to kind of keep the future in mind. And, I, you know, if you think about what the last hundred years has meant in shifting Georgia politics, it were probably unrecognizable from where we were a hundred years ago. A um, hundred years from now, I'm sure that'll be the case too. But I appreciate you outlining the relationship between Athens and surrounding counties. Um, I appreciate you kind of outlining choosing people first. Um, I, I want to, in a roundabout way, I'm going to, I see that we have comments here. Um, from Dan and Deborah, two of our regular viewers. And I'm going to try to figure out uh, folks here, you know, because we have an elected official on and because I know we have some folks that are supporters or not supporters of the person we're interviewing. I'm going to try to, if it's okay with our viewers, find a way to weave those questions together here in a single question. Um, and then if we have time to get more in the weeds after we get through our COVID section, we can get into individual bills and, and things like that. But uh, Houston, I mean, I, I, you know, we're, you can see the comment sections like I can, you can see some of the questions that are popping up here. Um, but can we talk about, I think this would be a good transition into the state rep process, because I'd like to hear a little bit about a, uh, for, uh, the public that may not know, you know, some folks just see rep and they assume that means you're a congressperson. Uh, you know, if you can talk about what, what is the job of state rep? Um, and then the decision-making process that goes into some of the bills you see being mentioned here in the comments section, um, and uh, and you know how that. I'll add an element to that. I'm sure that just like folks are passionate in our comments section, folks are passionate in the information you receive via email and calls and postcards and things like that. How that whole decision-making process goes to towards some of the bills and absolutely uh, see mentioned and beyond. Can you explain that? Yeah, so one of the, it was actually at a Rotary meeting last year, uh, Tim Bryant, who was the host of that uh, forum, asked the question, how do you, you know, formulate how you're going to vote on something? And that's always uh, an interesting uh, question that, you know, for me, 
I, I think of a few things. One, have I ever, you know, stated on a campaign, the campaign trail that I was going to do something? Um, and if so, I'm going to do what I said I was going to do, because I think that's why people liked it. You're voted for you. And, um, and then two, you know, what are your, what are your beliefs? And then three, uh, and, and all these kind of mixed together is not necessarily a, a hierarchy, but you know, it's, it's, and then what are your constituents? Uh, what's your district? And, uh, because I think those are all important elements to, to make a decision and on not only how you're going to vote, but on the issues you lead on. And, um, you know, we're, we're talking about, uh, some bipartisan work. I, I was thinking back about it yesterday. Uh, uh, you know, I've, I've ha been the lead sponsor on seven bills that I've passed through the house, uh, so far, which, uh, for, for, you know, first year member or freshman member, um, I guess, uh, for, for lack of a better term, you know, that's, uh, a lot. I mean, it, it's, it's kept us busy and, and, uh, we passed a significant bill last year that was signed by the governor, uh, uh, that Dan uh, mentioned there and, and, uh, really proud of that, a, a, an important piece of legislation that'll help us move forward through the opioid issue. Um, but also, you know, to lower rates of HIV and hepatitis C. Um, and, and so, you know, those are the kind of issues where we've, uh, led on and, you know, but, but not only the seven, so the seven bills that I've gotten through, I, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I, you know, you had 160, uh, 180 house members. Um, and, and I want to say, uh, four or five of them passed with no, not a single, uh, no vote. And then maybe two or three had just a couple no votes. Um, and so overwhelming bipartisan support on those, those items. And that, those are the issues where, uh, I've tried to lead on and, and make a difference on because, I think it's really important that we find uh, areas of, of agreement um, and, and, you know, to, there are difficult issues that always come forward and, and there's votes that are challenging. Um, so, uh, you know, I see Deborah's asking about a particular piece of legislation and there, there's, there's issues that uh, are challenging. And so you have to uh, look at, look at different items and there's also different parts of the process. You know, you have uh, uh, a vote um, and then now, uh, for example, that piece of legislation is over in the Senate. Um, and so, you know, it hadn't received final passage. And so there's, there's all sorts of elements of uh, bills that, that take place and you have to make a decision only on the issues that you're going to uh, lead sponsor, but co-sponsor. Uh, like I've worked on surprise medical billing. I think that's a really important issue. Healthcare is just a, a, in general, an area where I focused on, I'm excited and honored to serve on the health committee and the insurance committee. And so those are both areas uh, because because healthcare, I think, is just an issue uh, right now in our state and our nation that we're we're focused on, and so uh, particularly with coronavirus, you know, we've got uh, challenges ahead of us, of course, uh, there uh, because uh, you know we 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 feel like the numbers are moving in the right 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 direction. I know right, I think we're about to get more into COVID nineteen, but the numbers are moving in the right direction have been. Uh, but but make no mistake, we're not out of the weeds yet, and and there are challenges ahead. Um, and so healthcare is a is an area of focus for me, and somewhere where I'll continue to to put my time and energy behind. Sure. So let's talk about COVID nineteen. Um, and actually, let's talk about it first through the lens of state reps. So can you talk about kind of your timeline of of when this kind of came on your radar, when it first started affecting things for you, and and kind of how that played itself out. Yeah, it was really interesting um, because we were in the middle of our regular session at the Capitol. You know, generally we're in session uh, uh, early January to, to late March or early April. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we, we were hearing about obviously this uh, potential issue uh, in February, maybe late February. Um, but it was kind of like everybody. It, it came quick and all of a sudden, it's the issue. And, and I'll never forget, uh, we had crossover day that Thursday, uh, which is kind of when every bill, it, it's one of the big days of the Capitol because a, a bill in order to remain active has to pass over through either the House or Senate to remain active. And uh, so, you know, we're generally, you're, you're there from 10 a.m. to midnight, essentially voting on legislation. And during the day, you may break back into committee uh, but it's a it's it's a crazy day because there's so many bills that you're voting on and moving forward on. Um, so that Thursday was crossover day. Monday, um, you know, we were kind of thinking and hearing about, you know, more and more about coronavirus. 
And then Tuesday, uh, again, it was it was like, hey, this coronavirus, this is going to be, uh, it all of a sudden really started ramping up. And uh, Wednesday was a committee day where you're kind of getting things ready for crossover day. And, and you know, Tuesday afternoon and Wednesday, it started to look like, hey, are we even going to have crossover day? Because, you know, this thing is really uh, moving quickly. And uh, so sure enough, uh, we were able to have crossover day. Uh, but, but, you know, that week is when we knew that this was going to be a very serious challenge. And one of the first things that we did was our local state legislative delegation, uh, Spencer Fry, who we work very well with, uh, Marcus Weedauer, uh, Frank Ginn, Bill Cows, that we have a really good working relationship with our local delegation. We set up a meeting with the hospitals for that Saturday. Uh, and, and so we were, had crossover day Thursday. Friday was a session day. Um, but a very short, basically just reading the bills, getting them assigned to committee, uh, because, you know, now they've either passed the house or Senate, they have to pass the other chamber. Um, and so they're getting assigned to committee. And so, uh, uh, we're, uh, that Saturday, I want to say it was about 11 AM. Uh, we met it was either 10 AM or 11 AM. We had a, our first meeting, uh, uh, kind of before we didn't have any cases at that time in Athens. Um, and we had our had that meeting with the hospitals, and uh, and with some other healthcare folks and providers, and we really started to talk about this issue. We had the mayor, um, and it was a really good conversation um, because we were ready when uh, that next day. I want to say it was the next day where we had two for our first two confirmed cases in Clark County, and so we were able to have these conversations and discussions ahead of time. And so when 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 those uh, confirmed cases came about. We weren't freaking out. Uh, we knew that they were coming, you know, because early on in coronavirus, uh, when this thing was hitting everybody, it was it was a mystery to everybody. Mm. And you know, when you heard, "Oh my gosh, we have a case here," well, you know, we knew there were going to be cases here. There's going to be cases everywhere. Uh, it's just a matter of time. And and one of the challenges that obviously was early on, and unfortunately, it was a challenge for a long time, was testing was not where it needed to be. And uh, so, what we said from the beginning. And this, frankly, still remains true today. As testing increases, we're going to have more cases. And so, as we had a couple of cases there early on, you know, and and uh, that was kind of just ripping the bandaid off because they're they're coming, you know. And and uh, so, uh, we we had the cases, um, and then we you know were able to kind of again do a joint release together. Um, and and something that we've done throughout this period is uh, joint. Uh, releases with our mayor, uh, with uh, the Oconee County elected officials, uh, with our state local legislative legislative delegation. Uh, the Winterville mayor's been on our calls. Uh, we've set up these regular calls with the hospitals. Uh, you know, we were thinking we were going to be able to continue to meet. Well, after the first one, you know, we, uh, I guess that next week, it's amazing how quickly this, you know, just everything happened. Um, but but uh, I guess about Tuesday the next week, we learned that there was a state senator who had been at the Capitol had tested positive for COVID-19 mm -hmm. and had been showing symptoms. And so the whole state legislature went into quarantine for 14 days. Uh, I guess we didn't have the full 14 left. I think it was 10, 10 more days. Um, so instead, we had to meet by phone, of course, with the hospitals. And, uh, you know, that's where I started to learn the Zoom, Zoom lifestyle and the, the phone call, conference call lifestyle that we've all become accustomed to. Right. Uh, because it was just nonstop Zoom meeting, phone call meeting. You know, it's, I mean, I didn't move from my house for however many days, 10 or 10 days. And, and I was never bored. <laughs> I mean, it was nonstop, you know, every day, 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. It was constituent calls, cons you know, helping folks with whether it's unemployment benefits, question questions about COVID-19, uh, just trying to answer uh, questions or get people in touch with the right resources. It was nonstop, and it maintained that for several weeks. Uh, I'd say maybe a, a couple weeks ago, it started to slow down. Um, uh, but, you know, we still have been helping folks regularly with unemployment benefits. It's been one of the challenges uh, that, you know, the State uh, Department of Labor has just been inundated. And uh, so that's pose some challenges. We tried to help folks out as much as possible and really uh, feel good about the constituent services we've been able to provide because that's one of the, in, in a time like this, that's one of the most important things you can do is constituent services and communication. 
because one of the things that I would say throughout this process is that we uh, need to get data out to people so they can make informed decisions uh, because I'm a big believer in, and if, if people know what's going on, uh, they're going to make the right decision, no matter mm -hmm. what the government says, um, because uh, I think people are smart and they, they understand uh, that, you know, hey, we either have an uptick or we're in a good position or otherwise. Um, and so uh, I've always believed we got to get this information out to individuals as best as possible, something that we've been uh, working on is, you know, the state state data, you know, just trying to get that information is, is up to date and out to folks as quickly as possible. Uh, because I think it's really important that, that people know uh, the situation that we're in and how we continue to move forward. Um, and so the calls with the hospitals, with the Athens Neighborhood Health Center, with Mercy Healthcare, uh, with the, the mobile clinic, you know, the, 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 that was another kind of random, you know, thing that, you, you know, uh, you just don't know what's going to come up in a situation like this. But we worked with GEMA uh, in order to help get approval for the mobile clinic. And I'm sorry, can you, for our audience, can you, GEMA, what's GEMA? Georgia Emergency Management and Homeland Security Agency. Okay. Sorry, it's a mouthful. I don't yeah. tick it off. I don't forget a word. Um, uh, but so we, you know, work with, because uh, basically all the state resources are being funneled through GEMA, um, whether it's testing or supplies, PPE. Um, and so we, you know, just for example, uh, we were talking to the mayor and the manager about, you know, making sure we get, the mobile clinic up and running, which is going out to you know to places that are underserved. A lot of times, uh, where people don't have a car, uh, to homeless populations, uh, because that's a key indicator of how how widespread COVID nineteen is. And so these were uh, that was something that we helped get approved, and and uh, so those are some of the challenges. Um, and you know it's it's funny. I I just remember. I know we're kind of all over the place, uh, or I am, uh, but but uh, you know so we. You know, when we went in quarantine that that Tuesday, or we'd finished session on Friday, we thought we weren't. We thought we had finished session, but we actually had to go back on Monday of the following week uh, because we had to declare a public health state of emergency, which is the very first time in our state's history that we had a public health state of emergency. And it's really important that we did so, and it was overwhelming. You know, I, I want to say unanimous uh, bipartisan support uh, because that allowed the governor to have the authority uh, to, whether it's with uh, using the reserve fund uh, for funding uh, PPE equipment, uh, whether it's for, uh, you know, the various decisions that he's had to make throughout this time. Um, but it was the first time in our state's history that we've had to do so. And then it's been autumn, it's been renewed uh, a couple of times since. And then, you know, we're actually going to go back to session here in about a week um, because we, because of what, what happened, we hadn't finished our legislative session. And, you know, I was hoping we'd be able to go back in May um, and uh, or, or even earlier to, to continue our legislative session because I really want us to finish the session. And uh, there's a lot of important bills that we need to get through and get done. I've got several bills of mine that are sitting over in the Senate uh, that are really important. And uh, I think there uh, is a couple of health care bills, a paid leave for state employees, which is a very significant piece of legislation. Mm. I've got a bill to fight human trafficking. Uh, so I think it's really important that we go back and we finish the entire legislative session. Um, but, you know, and that's, I was hoping maybe we go back earlier. And it, and really the challenge there is because of the budget, uh, we don't have the May revenue uh, numbers until June, um, as it makes sense. In April, state revenue was down 30, uh, I want to say 37% from last April. And so these are the sort of challenges moving forward with the budget. And now that, you know, this, the economy has been more open in May, uh, we got to see what the numbers of May look like in terms of revenue, uh, because that'll give us a be better indication of what the budget will look like. Um, and so we, you know, that's going to be certainly one of the top issues, if not the top issue, uh, is, is the budget as constitutionally required. We have to pass a balanced budget. And so I think that's what you're going to see a lot of activity over. Originally, early on, agencies were asked to do 14% uh, budget reductions proposals. Uh, as we've heard over the last couple of days, the governor has put out uh, revenue, it looks like the revenue estimates can be 11% lower than, mm. than originally uh, anticipated. So uh, it's less of a cut, um, but there are, you know, uh, I want to say the 11 agencies, uh, the 11 uh, top agencies in terms of state budget make up 91% of the state budget. So you could cut the entire 38 
remaining state agencies and you only make up 9% of the budget. Um, so there are challenges ahead, uh, but, but certainly we've got to do all we can to, to, to support our educators, to support our, our folks in public safety, uh, to support uh, uh, health care, uh, because there are really important items in the budget that we want to continue to support. Um, so I know I've kind of gone off the question. No, I no, no. I mean, all, these, are, these are all reasonable things. And also, I just want to make a note, especially to our loyal viewers, um, I'm seeing additional questions about specific House bills. Um, we, we, have, there are certain COVID things we want to make sure we've addressed for posterity. And then certainly we'll try to get to individual questions, uh, for the state rep about individual bills. Um, Houston, um, we, you know, I anticipated this might happen that we might have some questions, some supportive, some, some tough, um, about, uh, various issues. One of the things that, um, I know we talked about emphasizing while we had you on the line, since we are so limited in time, we have 18 minutes left to cover the rest of COVID-19. Um, for folks that do want to contact you to ask about individual questions, whether it's, you know, your, uh, Dan, you know, Dan's point here about the syringe program, uh, Deborah's program here about hate crimes or Missy's question here about, um, house bill 906 affecting state historic sites. Um, you know, hopefully we have time to get to those questions. If you submit those questions, don't feel like I'm ignoring you. But um, if, if somebody is really driven to find out answers about those specific things, what's the best way for them to reach you, Houston, so they can ask and get answers to those questions? Yeah, absolutely. Well, my email is houston.gains at house.ga.gov, houston.gains at house.ga.gov. And then the uh, you know, website houstongains.com. You can leave us a note on there, go to my Facebook page, or uh, we always try to be accessible to folks. So happy to answer and uh, happy to, you know, uh, look up. I, I, can, I probably can't read the whole uh, comment there on, uh, uh, but but I can get back to you, Missy, afterwards and um, and answer uh, about, I think, what is it, 906? Yeah. Um, and as, as you can imagine, there's a, uh, I can't, uh, how many bills have been introduced, but there's, there's a lot of bills that get introduced. So, uh, uh, but yeah, happy to answer questions and always Great. be a resource to folks. And you said it was houston.gains at house.ga.gov. Is that right? That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So I'm just going to flash that up on the screen for those of you that, that need to ask more detailed questions about some of these individual bills. They're all important. I'm sure all of you are, are furious at me for not getting more into them right now. If I have time, I will. Just trying to keep uh, make sure we get the answers to the the, uh, the situation of the day. So there's Houston's email, um, and uh, and thank you to our viewers who are submitting questions. Um, and Missy, that, Missy's question obviously it's true near and dear to historic Athens' heart. I'm sure it's near and dear to a lot of our members' heart. Um, uh, but uh, I see Missy following up by saying thanks. So uh, okay. so great. So um, thank you, Houston. I appreciate that, yeah. and thank you, Missy and. Deborah and Dan for submitting questions. So, um, Houston, you said you were all over the place. I, I think that um, it's hard not to be all over the place these days. Um, one thing that I'm curious about is, so <clears throat> for those of us in the Athens area that have been watching the updates, um, that have been privy to these conversations, it has been really interesting watching the full state delegation and local government working hand in hand in the way that it has, whether we're talking about you know, Dodd and Kelly and you and Marcus and and everybody, you know, Spencer, everybody all in the same, uh, at first it was the same, as you said, same physical space, but then through these virtual conversations, I know that that came up when we talked to um, Mercy Health Clinic and Mercy Health Center and, and, and other things like that. But um, that type of bipartisan, multi-state municipal partnership is not something that's always typical um, what has it been like working through that process? And do you have any hope that those relationships and those partnerships might extend to new work once this is over? I do. I, I, uh, and, and in fact, you know, it's, uh, something that I've always tried to be, uh, is, is work with anybody. Um, and so frankly, I, I've, I've had pretty good relationships with, uh, whether it's, you know, folks on the other side of the aisle or our local government, we don't always agree on every issue. And, um, you know, the reality is there are certain people on the local government uh, level that don't want to have a relationship or work with me. And that's a decision on their end. I'm willing to work with anybody. 
Um, I tried to be someone who's a resource and, and uh, whether it's on local legislation. But during COVID-19, we, we, we really did uh, work together. And again, you don't always agree on every decision uh, that they're making or they probably, I'm, I'm confident they don't agree with everything I do or, or decision I make. Uh, but you know, these local uh, uh, updates, uh, something that I felt really passionately about is that we continue them and that we continue them in the same manner where we are all on the same page. Uh, if there's a sentence we don't all agree on, well, then we're taking it out. We need everybody on the same page. Um, and, and we never had an issue. I mean, we, 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 we did these jointly. Uh, we never had a, any sort of controversy or anything on the calls and updates. I mean, listen, we're all working for the same direction to keep mm -hmm. Athens and the surrounding counties healthy and safe. Um, and so not once did politics come into it uh, because really times like this are about leadership and and you can disagree on politics, but you can be a leader. And I think that we've had folks who've been willing to do that and we've worked together and uh, whether it's, you know, cross party lines or uh, cross county lines, it, it doesn't matter uh, because at the end of the day, again, our objective was the same, uh, was to, to beat coronavirus, which again, let's be clear, we there's still challenges ahead, uh, particularly over the next several days. We're going to have to see what the numbers look like. Um, you know, we're, we're, we, we've continued to move in the right direction, but again, there, there are challenges, how the fall is going to look like if there's another wave. Um, so there, there's challenges, but no, we're going to continue to work together because that's what uh, communities do in times of need and in times of crisis, because let's face it, this was a health crisis and an economic crisis right. uh, because with, you know, and, and just talking about the University of Georgia, for example, not having students here and talking to our local business owners. I mean, that's, that's another one of the conversations that we've, you know, regularly been a part of is talking to business owners in all sectors of our economy is we have challenges, significant challenges there. Um, and, and without the student population uh, that we've not had, you know, I guess it'll end up being about six months. Uh, that's, that is devastating to local businesses yep. um, and, and certainly, you know, certain industries have been hit worse than others, uh, but we got to support our local economy. We got to keep our people safe and healthy. Um, and so I think that we all have the same objective. Certainly sometimes you have different ways of getting there, uh, but at the end of the day, especially in times of crisis, uh, you got to lay politics aside and move forward. And like you said, you know, to kind of end your question and I, I kind of started my response with it, uh, but, but I really do hope that we can continue to have such a great working relationship. Um, again, we're not going to agree on everything, uh, but you know, if we can find the areas of agreement and stick to those areas and work together, uh, we can make significant progress and change. Um, and, and, and I think that it'll help everybody. Again, uh, there, there's issues that are divisive and, and let's just face it, that, that that's what they are. Um, and their their challenges at the local level, the state level, the level, the federal level, and if you let those things destroy your working relationship, then you're not a leader. Uh, mm -hmm. Instead, what you got to do is is take on the tough issues, uh, and then and then really work together on the issues where you can. And that's what I've tried to do while in office, and 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 I'll promise to continue to do uh, and work with anybody. Houston, um, we have about ten minutes with you, uh, so. That went quick. Uh, yeah, it's going quick. Um, but uh, I, I do very briefly need to thank our annual sponsors. And then we're going to wrap up by asking you the same three questions we ask all of our guests. Um, so if you're with us, just stay with us. This We're not going anywhere. This will take like 60 seconds, folks. So um, real quick, we want to thank our annual sponsors. These are the people that support our mission throughout the year. Uh, for 52 years, we've been working to celebrate and conserve community heritage in Athens, Georgia. That's not only the historic buildings, neighborhoods, and districts that we know and love that define our classic city as a classic city, but also the stories, recipes, entrepreneurs, um, cultural heritage, so many more things than that. And um, if you see a business on here that you can support, please do so. Clearly there's, they're turning around and supporting us. Also, if you'd like to become a member, uh, membership begins at only $5 a month. You or your household can make a big difference. Uh, I don't think folks realize how much for a local nonprofit, how big a deal it is when you get even one new donor. So please consider visiting historicathens.com. Thank you to everyone that supports us. Uh, the list you see on the screen here is the list of guests we have had and will have. This week we're interviewing tomorrow, uh, the head of the
Chamber of Commerce, uh, Athens Area Chamber of Commerce, David Bradley, uh, then uh, Commissioner Patrick Davenport, Commissioner Ovita Thornton, and Mayor Kelly Gertz. So it's a really flushed out week to be followed by lots of other interesting conversations. And so I hope that you'll continue to join us. Uh, if you uh, finish today's episode and are hungry for more, the Athens Welcome Center, which we operate, is offering 2 p.m. live casts, uh, including tours of local historic sites and virtual workshops. Uh, we're really excited about those. We appreciate Michelle Wynn and uh, Caitlin Short for continuing to produce those. Uh, as our brick and mortar Athens Welcome Center is not yet open, we appreciate welcoming people around Athens in other ways. And then uh, one last thing here, uh, if you are a lover of local history, please consider visiting historicathens.com. We worked with local designers and artists and then a uh, local print shop, Satisfactory Printing, to offer these series of local historic shirts, including the shirts that feature really some of the best buildings and landmarks of Athens, Rock Springs Historic District and Boulevard Historic District. Uh, they are affordable. They help us. Uh, please consider picking one up. So uh, we really appreciate that. So um, Houston, uh, wrapping up our last few minutes together, our last nine or 10 minutes together, um, I, uh, I wanted to kind of walk through some of the questions we've been asking each of our guests. Uh, the first question uh, asks you to put your imagination cap on for a second. So um, if, if you woke up tomorrow and this was all over, every Athens business you know and love was open, um, every restaurant, every bar, every park, every everything was open tomorrow. And um, let's say that social distancing wasn't necessary, quarantine wasn't necessary, it was safe to go anywhere and everywhere. Um, how would you spend your day? What are some of the Athens places you miss right now? Ooh, there's a lot. I, I love Athens uh, restaurants. They're some of the best in the world, whether it's homemade or uh, uh, Chuck's Fish, which is one of the newer ones that I love. I love Chuck's Fish. Mm -hmm. uh, sea Bear, uh, LRG Provisions, Last Resort. Uh, I know I'm missing a lot, but uh, th I mean, there's just so many great restaurants in Athens. Uh, there's a, there's a real neat green space that's new over by Athens Church that I had the chance to go and see the other day and uh, maybe get some to-go lunch or something from one of those and uh, spend it at the green space and uh, by Athens Church and uh, and and so uh, that that certainly be something I want to do of course we I guess we got to knock out breakfast before we get to lunch so maybe we go to Mama's Boy or something like that and. And uh, or farm cart, you know those biscuits over at farm cart are yeah, they're serious, yeah. Oh my gosh! Um, and so uh, you can you can do some damage at some Athens restaurants when you know Pulaski Heights barbecue. Uh, uh, there's all, all uh, and then uh, uh, White Tiger. Uh, that I mean, you know, we just got some Bud Hut. I mean, we got plenty of plenty of good food, and and uh, so I love Athens restaurants and and uh, spending time here. You know, just walking around downtown, we have so many neat retailers and, of course, our local restaurants there. Uh, yep. But the downtown area is just a, a, a great area. Of course, City Hall is a place that I always enjoy visiting and seeing. And um, I end up going in the post office over across the way a lot. And, and uh, just the, the downtown area is a place that's, that's really neat to me. And, of course, I love the Five Points area. I live out off... Uh, uh, you know, kind of Atlanta Highway area. I, I, so I, of course, want to spend time over here. And of course, we'll go over to the uh, Athens Church area. And so it, it's just a great, great town. I, I, like I say, born and raised here. I love this community uh, and love everything about it and can't wait to be able to finally uh, get out and about. Of course, I'm hoping that uh, we'll have, uh, and of course, the dream day in Athens is a game day. And uh, so we got to get out there for some Georgia football and, and cheer them on. Uh, and, you know, it's uh, one of the things that when, when we kind of heard and uh, there was an announcement that we're likely to have football, I mean, that's just huge news. But, you know, for me, obviously, I love football and uh, I, I make no bones about it. Uh, but at the same time, that's also huge for our economy. Uh, when you talk about our local businesses, uh, those seven weekends are significant for whether it's hotels, whether it's for restaurants, uh, retailers. Uh, so when you talk about our, our local economy, uh, football and again, our student population is critical uh, that we were able to uh, get back to normal as quickly as possible. Obviously, we have to be smart and safe, um, but but uh, I'm looking forward to being back in Sanford Stadium and cheering on the dogs. That's for sure. Sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, go dogs. <laughs> um, I, I, uh, 
you know, unless they're playing Notre Dame, and then I know how your allegiances lie. It's it's uh, it's uh, Georgia, hundred percent. That's right. Um, so our last two questions in the limited time we got. Um, <clears throat> the uh, the second question uh, concerns historic places. Um, it's likely you know when we're out of it, coming out of this, we're not only coming out of a pandemic, we may be coming out of a recession. Yeah. After a recession, usually you have a lot of pent up um, development desire. Sometimes that can cause some endangered historic places. And so we've been taking this opportunity to just ask each of our guests, you know, if somebody's watching this interview used in 50 years from now in the UGA library and they walk out after they've watched it, what are some local historic places here in Athens that you hope they can still visit? Places that you hope that we continue to preserve? Well, I mean, some of the places I just talked about, I mean, I think the downtown area is a place that um, has some really neat elements, whether it's, uh, you know, City Hall, the double barrel cannon, um, you know, uh, the downtown area is just, uh, of course, the arch on the University of Georgia's campus is probably the most iconic. Uh, uh, and then, of course, you know, we talk about, uh, you know, UGA, obviously, there's a lot of areas on campus, uh, whether it's the Founders Garden or whether it's Sanford Stadium. Uh, but you know, in the Five Points area, you have a lot of really historic uh, places well, like the uh, the wall that Birchmore built. Um, so there's a lot of really uh, neat uh, homes, whether it's, you know, off a of millage, on millage, um, millage Avenue, of course, that's where Cannon, Cannon's work is. Uh, so where I drive down every single day. Um, so millage Avenue is a place that's special. And, and of course, uh, this, there's, there's really neat neighborhoods off of there. Um, but then obviously throughout Athens, you just got some really uh, historic places and and uh, certainly I hope 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 I'll still be around in 50 years and uh, and maybe we'll get to see what it looks like and uh, hopefully a lot of the same things because uh, Athens is just a really neat place. Thank you. So speaking of Athens, our last question is always wide wide open, open-ended question, which is, you know, let's push back 50 years. Let's go 100 years from now. So let's say someone's watching this interview, uh, some researcher. UGA is watching this interview 100 years from now. Um, what would you want them to know about Athens during this moment, during COVID-19? You know, it's uh, somebody said something really interesting to me last week. And obviously, we have a lot of other things uh, going on right now in our country and in our community, in addition to COVID-19, particularly over the last couple of weeks. And as we all work together to make sure you know, racism is not something that is acceptable anywhere, anytime, and in any place. Uh, but somebody said something to me last week that was really, I thought, a, a, a good comment. They said, let's not want to forget 2020. Mm. Yeah, I think a lot of people are like, this is the worst year that we've ever been a part of, uh, which it's it's not uh, because our country and our world's been through a lot. Uh, it's, this is probably one of the uh, more challenging times. Uh, but let's use this moment uh, to, to, to come out stronger, uh, whether it's, you know, to ensure that we don't have racism in our community, in our country, whether it's uh, working together, like you're talking about how we form these working relationships because of, uh, and, and sometimes because of COVID-19. Let's use those relationships. Let's uh, take advantage of this moment to make our country and our community stronger and better. And I think that, you know, sometimes we're eager just to move on. Instead, let's reflect on it and use this moment uh, to move our community forward, because I think that uh, that, in the end, will end up making us a lot stronger over the next 20, 30, 50, 100 years. Mm. Uh, so we look back at 2020 and say, it was a tough year, but 2021, 2022, wow, they made some progress. And uh, I, I think that we're going to do that, and I think we're going to come out stronger uh, in the end of, at the end of this and, and, uh, and, and be a better, better community and a better country as a result of it. Well, I know our viewers, if, if they're not invited, uh, united in anything else, I know that we'd all be united in that hope that we come out of this stronger for sure. So um, uh, Houston, we want to thank you the, uh, for taking the time to talk to us today. Um, to our viewers, uh, we'll be back tomorrow at one o'clock with David Bradley of the Athens Area Chamber of Commerce. Uh, thank you again to uh, Peggy and Denny Gallus for making this week possible. Thanks to Representative Gaines for making himself available. Um, and to everyone else, uh, we will see you tomorrow at one o'clock. Be safe, be healthy, um, take care of yourselves. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank, have you. A great day. thank you. All right. Bye. Bye, Houston. Thank you. Take care.